हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मरीन इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस इज नेटर चीफ इंजीनियर रवि गुप्ता टुडे वी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट स्लज टैंक रिक्वायरमेंट दिस इज अ मार्पोल सीरीज व्हिच वी आर मेकिंग एंड दिस इज अ फोर्थ पार्ट ऑफ अ स्लज टैंक रिक्वायरमेंट इन टुडे वीडियो वी विल सी दैट व्हाट आर द रिक्वायरमेंट रिगार्डिंग स्लज टैंक आफ्टर दैट वी विल सी व्हाट शुड बी द कैपेसिटी ऑफ अ स्लज टैंक what are the requirement regarding the heating what are the requirement regarding the sewer connection and what are the requirement regarding the capacity so please tune till last i guarantee after watching this video you will learn a lot this is also a very important topic which are asked in examination like an iopp survey i have make a video of a iopp survey in my earlier content of a marpol series if you want to watch that i will share the link in the description friends marine engineering hub is a platform which make video like this which will be beneficial for your examination purpose so please do subscribe and please do share and if you want to clear your exam very fast then please join our membership i guarantee you will learn a lot so friends let's start the today video what is a sludge pump so why we use a sludge pump so basically sludge pump is used in order to make an internal transfer and also the transfer to the so reception facility so as you can see here in here this is a sludge tank so sludge is generated from the purifier drain oil mist drain compressor drain machinery sieve oil tray scavenger tank drain evaporation all thing are collected in a sludge tank after that now when if you have a incinerator on board in that case it may happen you transfer it to the incinerator such tank like waste oil tank and you burn some in the incinerator if your incinerator is not in proper functioning or you company tell you to give it to store in that case there also a line from a sludge holding tank to the store okay so this is how all the sludge which are generated on board are collected in a sludge holding tank so if anybody anybody asks you from where does this sludge is generated from where you are generating this sludge so this sludge are generated from various areas now here you can see you have a bunker tank this is a fuel oil purifier so from bunker tank you purify the oil and after that the sludge which are generated are collected in a sludge tank same goes for the lube well you are purifying the lube well the sludge are collected in a sludge tank like same that you are transferring some of that from from sludge pump to the incinerator for burning so like that there are many sources from where the sludge are generated on board for the which are collected in a oily residue sludge tank so basically we use a sludge pump in order to make the internal transfer and to transfer it to the sewer reception facility so where all transfer of sludge pump is recorded so these are all record recorded in a iopp tank known as iopp tank basically all the sludge tank have given a name as per the iopp nomenclature like suppose purifier drain tank oil mist drain tank fuel oil drain tank lube oil such tank fuel oil such tank like all that they they have been given name they are recorded in a oily record book so whatever transfer you are doing in a sludge pump you have to record in a oily record book which will be done by a chief engineer so now where does this regulation require to whom the sludge regulation tank regulation required so basically if your ship is of 400 gt and above should have a adequate capacity of a sludge tank so regulation 12 of marpol annex also is mentioned in regulation 12 of marpol annex 1 the it talks about the sludge tank capacity it talks about the oil residue in a tank so basically there you will find that it's written that it prohibit the sludge discharge connection to the oily bilge water tank tank top or oily water separator we'll see here in the earlier video visual monitoring should be there by a hopper tank or a side glass you should have a visual monitoring we'll see 
now now as i have told you earlier now you have suppose slush tank and oily bilge water holding tank so what is the oily bilge water holding tank so whatever the water leakage which is done on ship in engine room are collected in a oily water holding tank which is passed through a OWS equipment to the overboard while passing through the OWS equipment it is make sure that it is less than 15 ppm now if anybody asks you that can you drain slush tank to the oily bilge water holding tank so can slush tank be drained to the bilge water holding tank your answer should be yes it can be done the provision is been mentioned in annex 1 of regulation 12 but there are certain condition what condition it has been mentioned that if you have a slush tank and if you want to drain some thing to the bilge water tank it should be provided with a manually operated self closing very important word manually operated self closing valve it means that the valve should be searched that when you operate then only it will open in normal condition it will be self closed so what you can drain you can drain only the water content you cannot drain the oil you can drain the water content which you will get after the sludge get caught settled so what is told here sludge tank may be fitted with a drain with manually operated self closing valve and arrangement for subsequent visual monitoring of the settled water that led to the oily bilge water holding tank or bilge well it means that you can transfer the water which are collected in a slush tank from a manually operated self closing valve to a bilge water holding tank while doing that you have to visually monitor in order to make sure that you are transferring only water okay so this will be your answer after that the second question is asked can you have a common connection between the slush tank and a bilge tank can you have a common connection between slush tank and bilge tank the answer is no you cannot have a common connection in between bilge tank and slush tank but you can have a common standard discharge connection for sore please mark my word you can have a common standard discharge connection for a sore between bilge tank and slush tank but internal you cannot have so the slush tank discharge pipe and bilge water piping may be connected to a common piping leading to a standard discharge connection but if you have this arrangement if you have this arrangement that your bilge tank and slush tank bore are connected together and it is going to here in that case what will happen what will happen the normally if you are going to get to that in that case what will happen you should be providing a non return valve means you cannot do like this means suppose you are transferring sludge from here while transferring sludge from here to here if you want you can also transfer some sludge to the bilge tank so in order to avoid that you should have a non return valve which will prevent this type of this movement so you should have a non return valve which should be provided which prevent the other way side of movement and which can only do the one side movement of a bilge tank so shall not allow the transfer of sludge to the bilge system so you will have a screw down non internal valve arrangement so if anybody asks you in that case you can say that you can have a common standard discharge connection to sole but you should have a standard screw non down return valve in a bilge tank line so that to prevent any type of transfer from sludge tank to the bilge tank internally through sewer connection okay now what is the requirement of a sludge tank capacity now this is a sludge tank you are collecting sludge from other sludge tank small small tank to the big sludge tank so now what should be the capacity of your sludge tank so basically as per annex 1 regulation 12 
the capacity should be one percent of the HFO used for thirty days. So your capacity should be depending upon your fuel consumption. If amount of fuel which you are using for a thirty day, the capacity of your surge tank should be one percent of that. And if you are using DO, in that case it will be, in that case it will be half of. In that case it will be half percent. Now sufficient manhole should be provided to reach all part of tank. Why it is that? Because to ensure good cleaning, the heating arrangement. You can see here the heating arrangement. The heating coil arrangement should be provided because it help in making the transfer of sludge to the sewer easy. When you want to transfer the sludge to the sewer, you will heat up the sludge so that it will viscosity will become less thicker and hence it will flow easier to the sewer piping. After that, same thing. No direct connection between sludge and overboard piping. Okay, there should be a degradation pump, and there should be a standard discharge connection, and it should be fitted with a high level alarm. So, if anybody asks you what are the requirement of a sludge tank capacity, normal such a requirement, so you should say this: one percent of the HFO for thirty day. You should have a heating arrangement. It should be fitted with a high level alarm. You should have a standard discharge connection. You should be fitted with a degradation pump and no direct connection between the discharge piping and the overboard discharge piping. Okay. Now, in examination, sometimes surveyor asks you a specific question that what should be the capacity of a sludge tank? You will say, sir, one percent of the fuel consumed for thirty day. Okay. But if if you want to hear some specific formula, then you say. This thing, there is a formula given, a standard formula for all ship. V equal to K C D. V indicate the minimum sludge tank capacity. Okay, and K is a constant which is taken 0.01 if you are using heavy oil for main engine and 0.05 if you are using D O. Okay, now. C is the daily fuel consumption. Now suppose if you are consuming 15 ton a day, then you will put 15. Means you will put 0.01 into 15 is the fuel consumption. Suppose C. This is the C. K is the 0.01. Now what will be D? Now D is the Maximum period of voyage between the port. So maximum period of voyage can be of ten day, five day, seven day. But if it not specified, we will take standard thirty day. So based on that, whatever the value will come, that will be your sludge tank capacity minimum requirement. Means you should have a sludge tank which should be minimum that much. You can have more, but you cannot have below that. So, if the surveyor want to ask a specific formula based sludge tank capacity, then you say this. Otherwise, you say this seven thing. So, friend, I hope in today video you have learned that what should be the sludge tank capacity as per the formula, what are the requirement for sludge tank, and what can we pump, can we transfer sludge tank from to build water tank? Yes, we can do. How? I have told you. Can we have a common connection? No, we cannot have a common connection between bilge tank and sludge tank internally. But we can have a common connection for a standard discharge overboard. But this can only be happen if you should have a screw or nut and bolt in one of the line. Now after that, we come to know that what is the requirement of the sludge tank. So if you think you have gained something from this video, then please, please. Please do subscribe and please do share our video in your social media platform, friends. If you want to clear exam first, then I request to all of you join the membership. You will get good content of exclusive perks of watching the video which are yet to be released, and you will have a clear.